Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Charles Capuio. I've been in, in government for a long time, but now I'm uh, what I would call a roving you know, geoscientist. <laughs> in Malawi, most of the ASM activities are concentrated on the limestone and marble crushing for lime production, either for chicken feed, animal feed, or for the construction industry, and the local aggregate crushing or unnapping for the construction industry, sand collection from either rivers or, or the lake, again for the construction industry, and traditionally, clay extraction for the production of either pots, and in more recent years, we have seen that there is an economic element attached to the use of this clay in producing uh, pottery. Uh, we also have uh, gypsum extraction for the production of uh, chalk, ex uh, ex extraction of uh, saline soils for the production of salt, and the gemstone, which I think my colleagues here are more familiar with. And finally, in more recent years, we have seen the uh, burning of, uh, of gold. Each of these uh, SM activities have got specific uh, environmental impacts, which I will explain as I go along. In Malawi, maybe some of us are not aware, but the ASM uh, operations are scattered throughout the whole country. In some cases, it's basically artisanal involving the extraction of clay uh, just for the traditional construction of uh, houses. Uh, while, I think there's a point here. While the ones I've uh, shown across here have got an economic uh, element. So you can see there's quite a lot of gemstone uh, mining in the north, uh, quarry stone, uh, and a bit of uh, gemstone crushing in the south, and the limestone in the, in the, in the south. But uh, basically, it's just almost every district you've, you find the artisanal and the small scale uh, mining of uh, some kind. What are some of the characteristics of uh, artisanal and small scale uh, uh, mining operations? Firstly, you agree with me, it's not only unique to Malawi, but I think across Africa and maybe beyond, it's a property driven activity. It's usually dominated by a large number of people, including women and the children. Uh, who are engaged in these informal activities. Secondly, it's a labor-intensive activity. The use of mechanized uh, machinery is very, very limited. The products that come out of these activities are locally sold, with a few exceptions that are exported, particularly in the case of Malawi. Most of the gemstones, I think, are exported. They're not used uh, locally. Again, more important, there are low-paying activities. This has got a bearing on how we can manage the environment. And let's keep it, that in mind. And finally, the activities expose the miners to very harsh working conditions. Let's admit, ASM activities cause significant damage to the environment. You see some examples that uh, I will show you that if we are not careful, Malawi is not a mining country, but we are just starting to get into the game, as the director of Geological Survey mentioned yesterday. If we don't act today, and contain the environmental damage that these activities are causing. 
it's going to get worse, being a small country. Our ASM operations are not sensitive to public health. And the activities, unfortunately, you have just heard yourself uh, from gift, they are not regulated. Reasons why they are not regulated have already been mentioned, although I know Emma and uh, Ian Mbewe have, repu uh, <laughs> have refuted that they, are, that they are organized. But in fact, they are not regulated because most of the operators are not organized and it's difficult for the regulators to reach them out. One other thing that we have observed is that the existing environmental regulations, which GIFT outlined, very nice regulations, very nice instruments, legal instruments, but they cannot be applied to resolve environmental problems associated with the artisanal and small scale miners. It's very, very difficult. The, one of the reasons why it's very difficult to apply those regulations to ASM operators is firstly, you don't know where these operators are. They're out there in very remote areas. Even the regulators will not be able to, 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 to reach them. You only see the products, for instance, the gemstone, coming into the city and being sold, or some of the products being sold on the roadside. Another issue that you should bear in mind is that uh, most of these uh, ASM activities are migratory in nature. The miners do not spend 10 years, 20 years in one spot. They will move from one place to another place in search of different minerals depending on the taste, depending on the price of the different minerals that are amenable to small scale uh, mining. The ASM operations unfortunately also accelerate erosion in areas adjacent to the workings because they lead to loss of vegetation. The vegetation is lost either for, the construction, for construction or for fuel. In some cases, the fuel, uh, the, 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 the forests are created in order uh, to pave way for the mining. And this can lead to increased suspended sediment load in nearby uh, streams. Where there is a lot of uh, sand mining, you'll find that they extract uh, the sand either in the riverbed or in the river banks. That can lead to instability of uh, river banks. Uh, there is alteration of river channels, particularly where there is gold panning, uh, where you can affect the flow of the river due to the mining of those alluvial uh, deposits. In the recent times, as I mentioned, we have witnessed a lot of uh, gold panning in the country, and uh, we have noticed that uh, the use of sluice boxes increase suspended material in downstream, uh, downstream or uh, reaches. I think uh, Gift showed a picture that uh, was very, very clear, and that can uh, be a problem for the aquatic life. Although not very, very uh, common at the moment in Malawi, but the use of uh, mercury can be very, very dangerous. It was already uh, mentioned because it's, it's a toxic material and it can affect the aquatic, uh, uh, aquatic life as well as the miners. Most of the ASM activities, unfortunately, are done by people who have very little knowledge of mining activity. 
of uh, sustainable mining. There will be a lot of uh, dust and protected tailings, and waste rock dumps, and so forth and so forth. And unfortunately, these will find their way into the aquatic environment, thereby affecting aquatic life. There's considerable loss of uh, arable land because, as George mentioned yesterday, most of the areas that are mined are not rehabilitated. Once the deposit is finished, the miner moves on. There are reasons why they are not able to rehabilitate. I will explain a little bit later. And in some cases, the miners leave pits which can become a safety hazard both for people and uh, uh, for animals. The duration of the impacts are mainly long term. In a few cases, uh, for instance, where it uh, involves the deforestation, maybe that impact can be reversed. But in some cases, I can assure you the impacts, uh, the impacts cannot be uh, reversed. And unfortunately, the majority of the impacts from these ASM activities are diffuse in nature. And very, very difficult to manage unless appropriate methods were employed at the beginning of the, of the mining activity. In short, in Malawi, the types of impacts to the environment really depend on the mineral and the nature of the mining activity as you'll see in the next uh, slides. Let's start with the, some of uh, the actual activities that take place in Malawi. Land production. This is an odd activity that has been taking place in the country for a very, very long time. Land production has been done either commercially with a permit, or in some cases, just at the backyard of your house. The regulators don't even know that you are burning lime, but you only see the product. And for a long time, we have been using the traditional method. I think it was Mr. Msiga who explained yesterday this traditional method. I won't go into any detail, where you use a lot of uh, firewood. I have in mind one area in the south where the whole area has been deforested to such an extent that uh, there's no more, there are no more trees as a result of uh, land burning. So this traditional method of uh, land production uses a lot of uh, uh, a lot of firewood and is, a major, is one of the major causes of uh, uh, deforestation. The products that come out of uh, this is either quick lime or hydrated lime. The meaning of uh, this uh, quick lime or hydrated lime generates a lot of uh, fine powder. and produces dust, which affect the quality of air either in the milling site or in the surrounding areas. You can see uh, from uh, this here, there is a quite a lot of uh, uh, lime dust, uh, which is even visible in the, in, in the picture. The areas where the limestone or marble has been mined is often not rehabilitated, and it leads to loss of uh, arable land. So as I've already explained, the result is that uh, 
the burning of uh, the lime to produce uh, the limestone to produce lime leads to deforestation and the deforestation we all know in a country like Malawi will increase erosion and the situation of the drainage system. We have in recent years experienced perpetual flooding uh, effect on the aquatic life and unfortunately most of our hydro, uh, most of our power is generated uh, from hydro and it's also uh, affected. Rock aggregate crashing for Quariston and Terrazzo. For those of, of us who are from Lilongwe, we have seen examples uh, around. Uh, for our visitors, if you had a chance, you could be taken it. Not, not very far away from here, where you see a lot of, uh, oops, I've run out of battery. <laughs> where you would see a lot of uh, hand napping of rock aggregate. Most of the quarry stone is produced from hard rock, uh, particularly the basic types, because it's the one that gives a very good, uh, uh, good, good uh, quarry stone. And uh, terrazzo is produced from limestone or, or marble. The crushing and bagging of the terrazzo and limestone, as I've also mentioned, for sale, leave a lot of dust in the surrounding. This example is actually beside a main road where the artisanal small scale miners are selling their marble. You can see the amount of dust that has been, uh, that has been uh, generated. I've already mentioned about uh, the pits, uh, but uh, just to again highlight that uh, you actually uh, lose the aesthetic value of, uh, of the environment. Sand extraction. The sand is either extracted from the river bank or from the river bed. If you extract the sand from the river bank, you cause instability and the failure of the banks, resulting in increased dissolution and, of course, decreased the uh, water flow. This is, a, again, an example. I don't know whether it's clear from where you are seated, where the sand is actually being extracted from the actual riverbed. Again, The increased situation contributes to flooding and uh, increases the stability of the water which will affect the aquatic life. We don't see the effect of the aquatic life because some of the animals that are affected are not what we are traditional, what we are normally used to, but they are part of the ecosystem crabs, uh, and so forth and so forth. Then there's the extraction of clay for ceramics, pottery, and brick making. In Malawi, clay for ceramics and pottery is usually extracted from what we call a dumbo. It's just a vinegar name for a swampy area or sometimes from uh, an anthill. Where the clay has been extracted, you'll find there are huge pits. There's a, a very good example as we go towards the lake on, uh, on the Lilongwe Salima Lord, where you find a lot of pits that have been left after extracting the clay for, uh, for brick making. Those pits during the rainy season are filled with water which become a favorable breeding environment for mosquitoes.
When you have produced your bricks, you have to cure it. And in Malawi, this is a tradition of curing the bricks. You use a lot of firewood. Imagine if every village had 10 of these. How much wood are you going to use? And this is, mind you, hardwood. It's the preferred material for curing the bricks because it produces uh, uh, sufficient, you know, uh, sufficient heat. I don't know whether our colleagues in the Department of Environmental Affairs are enforcing, but I heard that uh, the use, uh, the, the, the curing of bricks within cities for government projects is going to be, uh, uh, is not going to be allowed in Malawi. That would certainly assist. But what about the rural areas where this is uh, taking place? Gypsum occurs in Dambos, where calcium comes in contact with the sulfites and form a layer of uh, the gypsum crystals. When the gypsum crystals are extracted, they are bent in ovens and crushed for chalk making. Again, the extraction of this, this gypsum leave pits that are not filled, and also uh, the, the, the production of the chalk. It's not much at the moment because there aren't many operators, but it can also lead to, uh, lead to uh, deforestation. In one or two areas uh, in the country, particularly in the south, there's been soil production from southern soils. The salt making involves the scraping of mostly topsoil and soaking that soil in water before filtering to dissolve the salt. The salt, the solid is then boiled in half drums to evaporate the water and leave the salt to accumulate at the bottom. And unfortunately, that method also uses a lot of uh, a, a lot of fuel wood. Then Charo area, I think the Geological Survey Department, you have, been, uh, you have been doing some work there, and the Department of Mines. Then Charo area, there is an area where there's been a lot of uh, salt production. So this is also going to contribute to deforestation. Gemstone mining. My colleagues in the front bench here are all gemstone miners, so they are aware of this. One of the main environmental degradants of uh, gemstone mining are the hundreds and hundreds of pits that you leave. If you go to Mzimba in the north, Mzimba Rumpi area, you find this piece. I think this picture was taken in one of those areas. You can see it's not, uh, it's not protected. The aesthetic value of the ground, of the land, is, not, uh, is, not, is, is lost, completely lost. This is one of the main impacts that we need to tackle immediately. Because the gemstone miners are organized. Therefore, they can be easily uh, civic educated on how to rehabilitate, with, uh, to rehabilitate these, uh, these areas. Secondly, the miners leave Stock piles, large stock piles of uh, materials that has been excavated, and those are just uh, sitting on the surface. Very, very unsightly. Uh, 
There are some areas where the gemstones are found either in the riverbed or in the river banks. Here's an example of uh, a miner who is excavating, I think this was in uh, Garnet from uh, Salima. You can see this gentleman, uh, it's probably not very clear, but is excavating <laughs> Garnet from uh, a river bank. And unfortunately, most of the river banks are made up of loose material. There's been loss of life, unfortunately, in the past as a result of this type of uh, uh, mining. But it's going to cause the river bank to collapse. And that material will, will certainly result into saturation of, uh, of uh, the river. Here's another example, an old lady extracting garnet again from a river bank. Very, very dangerous uh, operation. You can see on the left the loose material. All that material with a little bit of rain will come and found its way into the river channel, thereby breaking the the stream and causing uh, flooding. Worse still, some gemstones have an example of uh, the gemstones in the Salima, the, the, the Garnet. They have attracted a lot of miners in an area within a very, very short uh, period. But there are no requisite sanitation facilities in those uh, areas and the miners will just dispose of effluent in the rivers, thereby polluting the, the rivers. This results in a reduced uh, health standards and increased waterborne uh, diseases. Good panning. As I said, this is a recent activity that we have witnessed in Malawi. There are basically, at the moment, three areas where we have seen a lot of uh, gold panning taking place in Malawi. One in the Lilongwe area here, in Mangoji, and uh, in the south. Our gold is associated with river gravels and sand. And the only mining that we know of is in uh, panning. The main impact uh, therefore involves the pollution of rivers and dams because the material is excavated in the river, uh, in the river sediments. And this type of mining will expose the sediments to oxidizing conditions and thereby enhance the solubility and release of metal ions that were probably trapped in insoluble sapphires in the past. Here's an example. I think Gijaf also showed this. You can see that all this material, once it has been panned, will find its way into the stream. You can imagine what will happen to the downstream. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, situation and unfortunately, particularly in the, in, the, in the Mangoji area, it's very close to, to, to the lake. I've already talked about uh, the poor sanitation. Uh, one of the problems that uh, has been uh, observed, particularly in the Mangoji area, is that uh, the panas have invaded a forest reserve. <coughs> Either for construction material, uh, they, 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 they are feeding trees either for construction or for fuel. If we are not careful, that will lead into massive uh, deforestation. And of course, it will eventually accelerate soil erosion and the increased suspension 
in the streams and the, and the rivers. What are some of the challenges uh, of mitigating SM environmental impacts? As I already mentioned, SM operators lack appropriate basic knowledge and training in basic mining methods and environmental management. Our colleagues in the Department of Mines, maybe Georgi or Save, you've got a lot of work to do. Most of them are in this business through experience. They have never been to any geology school or mining school. And unfortunately, there is very, there is inadequate monitoring and enforcement of environmental standards due to the informal nature of the operations. We have already heard from Gift on, uh, uh, on this. The operations occur in very remote areas where the regulators cannot even reach. And uh, it was already mentioned the regulators do not have the resources to enable them go out and reach out these, uh, these miners. By law, the artisanal and small scale miners are not uh, are limited in what type of motorized machinery they can use. This means that their cash flow is not adequate to enable them conduct any meaningful and sustainable mining operation. As a result of the poor cash flow, the ASM operators have no financial resources to follow sustainable mining methods. And at the end of the mining, rehabilitate or reclaim the mined out areas. If you had a chance to visit some of the few mining areas, uh, 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 in, in, in the country, you would see what we are talking about. And we don't expect that the government will have any money to rehabilitate those areas. Where still the manners who were there at that time are not known wherever they go. In a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, what I wanted to share you in as far as the impacts of artisan and small scale uh, mining. Uh, on the environment is concerned in Malawi. I'm sure this also happens in your countries. I've had a chance of looking at uh, the video from Ghana, the God. Exactly the same, uh, the same problem. Thank you very much. Mm.